Our Thailand's military-backed government is out. Pro-democracy parties are in. But the makeup of the country's incoming government is anything but certain. Our winning opposition party, Move Forward, is moving to form a coalition. Its proposed combination includes a run-up poor Thai party, which says it is considering joining this alliance. A total of 309 seats out of 500 in the lower house are expected to be controlled by just these two parties. Move Forward leader Peter Limthorn Rat has called on all sides to respect the election outcome. And I think we can secure, uh, safe to assume that we have secured the majority in forming the government going forward. And then uh, we have uh, established a contact point to uh, make sure that we have an MOUs in order to form the coalition, as well as the transition team the transition team to make sure that there's a smooth transition from the previous government to the next government. It's a, a clear transition of power that will minimize risk of what's going on in the country. However, Portai says it's not definite that it will join the coalition. The party says it wants to study details of the deal that Move Forward has proposed. Portai's second place in the election was unexpected. It's the first time since 2001 the party has failed to garner the most votes at the polls. But the final result is a big win for opposition parties collectively. But while this may suggest which parties will form the next government, it provides no definitive answer to the question of who becomes the next prime minister. And that's because parliamentary rules are skewed in the military's favour after they were rewritten following the coup in 2014. Prime Minister Proud General Shah may not be completely, completely out of the running either. And that's because the country's top job is elected through a vote in a joint session of the upper and lower legislatures. The 250-member Senate, which is hand-picked by the military, is likely to favour a conservative candidate. The leaders of the opposition have called for patience until coalition talks take place. And uh, for more success, Sar Samba joins us live from Bangkok. Success, the Move Forward Party has officially won the election. How is the mood on the ground? And can we say for certain that its leader, its PM candidate, Mr. Peter Limtharanrat, will be the next Prime Minister? On election night, Thais went to bed with some uncertainty whether or how the results would, uh, would, would pan out. But then they woke up seeing that the Move Forward has actually won this election. It was a surprising result for many observers, definitely a surprising result for many Thais as well. I'm currently here at Giant Swing in the, in the middle of Old Town, where a lot of Move Forward supporters have come out, where the Move Forward party um, have actually come out and had, did a spontaneous rally, um, a literal victory lap, so to speak. The people are still uh, here, so to speak. The caravan is actually moving by. Maybe we can capture that in a, se a second as well. But I'm going to keep talking about the proper, um, about the possibility, um, about the probability of Peter Lim to end up becoming the next prime minister of a move forward-led government. Now, this is um, this is not a surefire bet. Yes, Peter, uh, Mr. Peter has said that he is uh, has reached out to five other opposition parties in order to secure 300 eight seats out of 500. That is definitely enough in the lower house of parliament. But as you mentioned before, for the PM vote, for the prime minister's vote, it's a bicameral system and it's a bicameral vote. You have 500 elected MPs, but also 250 appointed senators that were appointed from the previous military government. And if they vote on bloc, you just only need a third of all MPs in order to get there. So there are no clear signs yet how the senators are going to vote, but it is uh, sure that they're not going to make it easy. Peter himself has basically dared the senators to vote against a government that has won, won the popular vote. So this is definitely going to be very interesting in the next couple of weeks to come when coalitions, uh, coalition talks are taking place between all the parties, when they actually can form a government and when they actually can stand for a PM vote and if the Senate will actually let them pass. Well, uh, Saksit, whoever forms the government, whoever becomes prime minister, what is the immediate priority for this new government and this new leader? 
It has been a major topic during the um, during the election campaign. Something that we Thais call bak tong, literally mouth and stomach. In English, we would translate that with bread and butter issues. So it's the economy, economy, and economy. Thailand came out like the rest of the world out of the pandemic, but uh, its economy has stumbled out of the gate. GDP growth has not been really great. So that's why uh, most political parties have tried to uh, top each other with. Um, cash handouts with other populist measures. Move Forward is not one of these parties. They actually have their fiscal um, uh, policies are a little bit more sustainable, a little bit more reasonable. So it will be very interesting to see when they are, for example, going to go and bet together with Pertai, that has actually come out and thrown around with these cash handouts promises, whether or not they can actually find a promise there. But even beyond that, it's not about only about economy for Move Forward. It's actually about much more. It's about changing the Thai political culture. It's about changing uh, the power, the center of power to the people that have voted them in the office and not some um, powers like the military, like the elements that are linked to the monarchy that are outside of scrutiny, of parliamentary scrutiny. They want to give uh, power back to the people. They want to democratize Thailand as it used to be back in the 1990s. So this is a very ambitious goal for them. And it is not certain whether or not they can actually get there. But at least there's hope that they might get there. And Saksith will be speaking a lot more to you over the next few weeks as coalition talks uh, progress. Saksith Sambat speaking to us there in Bangkok. Well, let's head to CNA's May Wong now. She's joining us live from Bangkok as well. May, horse trading is in the air. How challenging is it going to be, though, uh, to form a coalition government if the military-linked parties are excluded? As you heard from my colleague Saksit earlier, many challenges lie ahead right off the gates, actually. It's the fact that the coalition government may not be able to pick that prime minister, as you mentioned, because the appointed senators will have a part to play in this because the numbers just don't make it up. Other challenges include what parties will actually be included in this formation of the coalition government. The parties, what kind of policies that they want to push in their respective parties because they've made promises to their voters. So are they going to be able to keep those promises? One example is that of Move Forward. Well, Move Forward is the winning party in this particular election. But right on the second place here is Pertai, the largest opposition in Thailand. And they too have a lot of the policies that they want to push forward. They want certain ministries to be under their care if they form the coalition government together with Move Forward. And so will Move Forward bar on those or will they not? So all these are going on in terms of very thorough and deep negotiations happening in the back room. But there's one particular policy and one particular issue that Puertai will not move on. I asked them and Puertai has said that they will not budge on the 112 less majesty law. They will not want to revoke that or abolish that, unlike Move Forward Party, who is more inclined to make such a bold move. So a lot of talks are in play right now. And this will take a couple of months before anything can be laid out. And May, you're in uh, the only district in Bangkok that has gone to Poor Thai, but only by a razor-thin margin. Why is this single win so controversial, though? And how are the locals reacting to the news of this? Poor Thai has suffered a massive blow in this particular general election. Not only have they lost seats in the home ground of Chiang Mai for Thaksin Shinawat, but also in different parts of the country. Here in Bangkok, there are 33 seats and Move Forward Party swept all of the seats except for one, the district of Lakrabang where I'm at right now. And very interestingly as well, the difference between Poor Thai winning this seat compared to Move Forward in second place here in this district is just shy of four votes and therefore Move Forward is going to ask for a recount of this particular district and they could possibly sweep all 33 seats in Bangkok. However, when I spoke to the people here in this particular district, they said that, you know what, it doesn't matter because it still goes to the pro-democracy parties and they're very happy about that simply because it's time for a change. The people have spoken and they say they want to see move forward, come up with different policies and also to implement them so that they can have better lives going forward. Now, obviously for Poor Thai, they are disappointed with the results and they have said that they will start working on finding out what exactly went wrong. But ultimately, they said that a win for Poor Thai, a win for Move Forward, is a win for democracy. I think today it's, it's, it's the day that we should celebrate the, the, the people's voice in 
uh, believing in, in democracy and congratulate uh, Moving Forward Party in winning uh, the election. And also, I, we together as a party wish Kun Pita the best of luck in, in becoming the Prime Minister of Thailand and forming the coalition government. Very tough and very detailed negotiations will take place among the coalition parties that are likely to form the next government. But ultimately, every party right now will hunker down and have an analysis on what went wrong for them and how they can actually rectify that. May, thank you for that. May Wong there speaking to us live from Bangkok.